between Mars and Jupiter orbits an asteroid that could save the Earth. We think of asteroids as the killer of dinosaurs, flying balls of death, bringing destruction and chaos. While that may be true, one asteroid discovered in 1852 may hold the key to saving our planet, while also ensuring humanity a prosperous future. Right now, NASA is planning to launch a mission to the asteroid belt to study the most promising such asteroid known, Psyche. But what is this asteroid, and how is it going to help? Psyche is the 16th minor planet to be discovered. A minor planet is basically anything orbiting the sun that isn't a planet, the moon of a planet, or a comet. So all asteroids, dwarf planets, some cool things called centaurs, basically everything else. Yes, Pluto is on this list as a minor planet. There are hundreds of thousands of asteroids on this list, and all the very early ones share something in common. They are close to Earth, and they are huge. Psyche isn't quite large enough to crush itself into a sphere under its own gravity, but it's round-ish and about 140 miles wide. That's about 1 16th the width of our moon. If it was out by our moon, you could definitely see it and make out its shape with your eyes. Psyche is unique for its incredible density. Far denser than the dwarf planets, denser than our moon, even possibly denser than the rocky planet Mars. This is rather unusual because larger asteroids tend to be quite porous and contain large amounts of much less dense water ice. In fact, astronomers estimate Psyche to be significantly denser than solid rock. This can only mean one thing. Psyche is a very metal asteroid. Initially, astronomers believed Psyche to be the exposed core of a failed planet, one perhaps torn apart by Jupiter's gravity or heavy impacts during the early destructive days of the solar system. More recent calculations put Psyche not at 100% metal, but more like 30 to 60% metal. So less heavy metal and more local metal cover band. Great, so it's a giant metal asteroid on the belt. What exactly will that fix on Earth? And how? Well, there are a lot of ways to go with this, but let's pull one thread in particular. We could improve the environment on Earth by accelerating the transition to green technology in a way that doesn't just destroy the environment somewhere else, all while fixing supply chain issues and making sure fancy new technology can be plentiful and cheap. How does that sound? Let's use electric cars as an example. An electric car in traffic doesn't pump out CO2, that's great. Generating the electricity for those cars also barely registers. The problem is in the extra resources to make an electric car, the damage done by mining and refining those resources, and the cost to do so. An old-fashioned car is mostly iron and aluminum, but electric cars require far greater amounts of copper, nickel, cobalt, chromium, and a number of other expensive rare earth elements that make gold look dirt cheap. Oh, and the electronics also use gold and silver. Mining these elements is extremely destructive to the environment and harmful to the humans involved. Often this work is done in poorer nations with lax safety regulations and no concern for the environment. Those minerals then have to be shipped somewhere to be refined, then shipped somewhere else to be made in a product or part, then shipped to you for use in your cell phone or electric car or whatever. As demand increases for these rare elements, the price goes way up and we may run out of some of them. That electric car, by the way, still needs a lot of steel and aluminum, just like a normal car. Green technology like solar panels, wind turbines, all kinds of electric energy storage all require more of these resources than old dumb tech. There's a reason electric cars are so expensive. And it's not like these cars and phones and batteries last forever either. So that's a bit bleak, but how's Psyche gonna help? Asteroids often contain higher concentrations of all these metals than what we find on the surface of the Earth. And that reason is buoyancy. After billions of years of cooling, the Earth is still almost all molten. And when you have a mixture of things in a liquid, what happens? The heavy stuff sinks. Rocks, dirt, and water make up the surface of the Earth, but the entire center of the planet is metal. Yes, rocks float on metal. There is enough nickel, iron, gold, and so on in the middle of the Earth, we could each have a skyscraper filled with golden furniture if we wanted. It's just thousands of miles underground and thousands of degrees hotter than we can handle. The Moon and Mars have a similar problem, but Psyche, the great metal asteroid, isn't hot or molten, or covered in a thousand miles of useless rocks. The metals are just there. Using conservative numbers, over 400,000 cubic miles of metals. You know what isn't there? A bunch of people whose drinking water will be poisoned by a cobalt mine. So how do we get it here? Someone has to go get it, refine it, bring it back. That sounds impossibly difficult, but not quite. Refining metal happens all the time. We got that covered. Bringing it back to Earth, also not that hard. Taking off and getting back to Earth doesn't take much energy at all, and gravity is the reason. Psyche has hardly any gravity. You know what does take a lot of energy and is therefore the most expensive part of this whole mission? Just getting the equipment off the Earth. The Saturn V rocket was as tall as a skyscraper. Most of that was fuel tanks. The majority of that fuel was burned just to get the rocket off the ground and into orbit. The entire rest of the mission used very little fuel in comparison. To use a modern example, for a loaded starship to go to Mars, assuming Elon's math is trustworthy, it has to launch into orbit with a giant booster and refuel multiple times in orbit to break free of Earth's gravity before heading to Mars. To get back from Mars, a fueled starship needs no booster and no orbital refueling. It can just come back, because Mars isn't that big. Psyche is farther, but has even less gravity, basically none in comparison. 
Now imagine this scenario. If you can get enough equipment to Psyche to mine and refine everything you need, you can use these materials to build even more mining equipment, construction yards, even ships themselves. You can eventually cut Earth entirely out of the equation. Never again do you have to heave tons of material into orbit to build anything in space. It's all in space already. Getting that ball rolling is tough, but it will pay back humanity well into the future. Earth needs more europium for fancy televisions? Need more neodymium for wind turbines? Indium for solar panels? Want a crazy amount of gold so your Mr. T cosplay can be more authentic? No need to strip mine away a rainforest. Just put 100 tons of the stuff in a starship and drop it down to Earth. Starship launches might be expensive, but are they 100 tons of gold worth of expensive? I have a feeling it'll pay for itself. Too good to be true? Well, remember, this asteroid is millions of miles away, and this solution will probably take an initial freight train load of burning investment money and a few decades to pull off. Minimum. But it could finally push us over the hump into a very promising and prosperous future. It means we need a lot of people who aren't short-sighted and are willing to stop complaining on the internet and put actual hard work in to see this project through. So basically, we're doomed.